What's up, everybody? Ryan Thomas here on the Thomas Take Sports Podcast, coming to you live once again from One Buffalo, New York. What an awesome, fantastic night uh, it is to be a Buffalonian. Uh, just getting back um, from a Friday night, and I get to take in the um, USA USA versus Canada World Juniors game. Um, not live, unfortunately. I watched it on TV uh, out at the bar. Um, but uh, that was an entertaining game. USA wins 4-3 to three in the shootout. And that was pretty cool to see Buffalo on that big of a pedestal for a big game, for a big moment like that in World Junior Hockey. Uh, USA, today, or USA winning that game today versus Canada down 3-1. Making that comeback and winning it in a shootout, four to three. Most hardcore hockey fans that I know think that the shootout should be just completely wiped out of hockey, and they should do continuous three on three overtime. I really don't know about that. I enjoy watching the shootouts. I enjoy watching a player versus a goalie. I enjoy that. It's basically breakaway, uh, a game of breakaway. Who who scores the most goals on a breakaway? wins the game and that's that's important because I think the goalie is the most important position in the game of hockey really so you got to have a good one in order to you know win those closely contested shootouts and um, those were the two of the best teams you know in this tournament arguably and uh, they went goal for goal with each other you know Canada had an early lead but USA climbed right back and ended up winning that game and pulling it away, pulling out with it. So um, good on them. Good on those young men playing hard in the snow with 70,000, you know, in a 70,000 seat stadium. Obviously, it wasn't sold out, but there were a lot of people in the stands. So, you know, I don't know the official attendance on that, but as soon as I have it, I have an you know, indication that there were probably thirty to 40,000, which is quite a lot. Um, but. That's neither here nor there. The subject matter of tonight's show, quick show, 15-minute part. I like to do these kind of one at a time. That way, if I have people asking me questions on things or sending me emails with certain questions, I can kind of dedicate one show to that topic. So one question that I've been getting a lot from people in the Thomas Take mailbag is whether or not George St. Pierre, the former UFC welterweight champion, the former UFC middleweight champion, whether or not he will decide to come back. There's a lot of layers to this story because we're at a, a point where it's the second time in four years where George St. Pierre vacated a title. He vacated the welterweight title, took four years off, came back, for the middleweight title for a chance at winning the middleweight title versus Michael Bisping back in November at UFC 217. And he won that fight. And then 31 days later, then again, vacated the title, which was a pure class, pure genius move on his part to kind of pick his fight and then win it and not hold up the division. You know, we see guys do that so often, namely guy, comes to mind is, is Conor McGregor. Obviously, he was forced to vacate his featherweight title, and he is still yet to defend his lightweight title. And it's held up the division. Realistically, he's going to be out even longer than what they anticipated. Probably won't return until the summer of 2018. And we're at a point now where Tony Ferguson might end up fighting the winner of Habib Nurmagomedov versus Edson Barboza. So, George St. Pierre, a guy that, you know... Uh, I've always said is the greatest of all time. He was the guy that, that really made me look at the UFC and say, wow, this is really special. Um, and he's been around a long time, obviously since 2003, since 2004, he's been fighting in the UFC. And obviously there was that, that, that four year hiatus there, but he was fighting any and all number one contenders as, as a title holder at the, at the, uh, weight class of welterweight at 170. Fought a who's who and, you know, decided to hang him up. And then a moment's time, he, he decides to come back. You know, 2015, there were rumblings, but 2016 was when it really started to gain some steam. And he won the title versus Michael Bisping, which I think is probably his greatest achievement to date, being that most people, not me, 
but most people did not give him much of a chance in that fight. They said that the weight class would be a problem, the fact that he hadn't fought in a while would be a problem, the fact that Bisbing was, was kind of on a tear at that point uh, would be a problem for GSP, um, and the fact that Bisbing has great takedown defense. Part of that was right. GSP took down Bisping. Bisping opened him up from the bottom position, dropping elbows and punches. And then GSP let Bisping up and eventually dropped him with the left hook and then sinked in the rear naked choke, and, and that was that. So on the feet, it was a pretty well-matched fight. GSP far more athletic than Michael Bisping. So that led him to, to winning some of the exchanges. But Bisping threw some hard punches in there as well. Um, you know, it was, a, it was a great match, great fight. Nothing wrong with that fight whatsoever. Um, and nothing wrong with that. The idea of that fight was wrong. It was, everything was great. The idea of the fight wasn't wrong. The idea of the fight was great. The fight was great. And it delivered. So as I mentioned, he, he vacates the title, leaves it in the past 31 days. He's the UFC middleweight champion. He decides to hang it up, you know, vacate his title. And the UFC quickly comes up with the next plan for the UFC middleweight division. The interim champion, Robert Whitaker, um, being that they created the interim title while Bisbing was the champion due to the knee injury that Bisbing had, he could not fight Yoel Romero or Robert Whitaker. Whitaker defeated Romero, becoming the interim champion, and now he is being promoted up to the middleweight champion slot. So, the reigning UFC middleweight champion is now Robert Whitaker. He is fighting Luke Rockhold in February. Um, so now that the middleweight division has moved on from GSP, will GSP come back? Will he come back? I think that there is more of a chance that GSP will come back now than there was the first time he left the octagon. The first time he left the octagon, I thought, he's probably done. It seemed like he was done. His performance versus Johnny Hendricks was not all that great. There were moments where it was good, moments where it was okay, but for the it was a close fight. He won via split decision, and it looked like his best days were behind him. But his comeback this time, although Bisbing landed some punches and, and cut him open, GSP looked fantastic for a guy that hadn't fought in four years. Uh, that was such a fun idea, the fact that he was coming back from a four-year layoff. There was so much stacked against him, and he was able to, to pull out with the victory. So there's a lot of layers to this. He comes back. He re reignites his legend, so to speak, and then leaves again. So there's reports... That have, that have been written since that, that he is suffering from colitis, which is a horrible intestinal condition, and it's mainly due to rapid weight gain or rapid weight loss. And obviously, rapid weight gain uh, was something that GSP experienced moving up from welterweight at 170 to 185, never fighting at middleweight in his entire professional fighting career. Um, this was a true test for him physically, Knowing his body, knowing that he's one of the smaller welterweights, even as the welterweight champion, uh, he was at a huge size disadvantage, but he bulked up for this Bisbing fight. He was jacked. He he looked very muscular, and he looked very thick um, You know, in his fight versus Bisping, probably weighing in at around 190 pounds. He weighed as much as 198 pounds during his training camp. He cut the weight to 185 and then could not get back up to 198, got as, got as heavy as 191. The reports that he was throwing up before the fight, there were reports that he was just not at 100% physically. Uh, stomach issues, back pain, kidney, you know, back pain, lower back pain, kidney pain. Um, so, you know, obviously that is not safe. So I think... He will take the time off that he feels is necessary. He'll take that time off. If, as I alluded to, if Conor McGregor does fight in, in the summer and he fights the winner of Tony and Habib, maybe if Conor McGregor gets through Tony or Habib, 
they will make the GSP versus Conor McGregor fight. I know Dana White has completely nixed it, but I, I think that that is likely. Or GSP could could come back for a title fight. And I think Rafael Dos Anjos has more than what it takes to beat Tyron Woodley if they make that fight soon, which I think they will. So just giving you my prediction for that matchup, I think Rafael Dos Anjos looked like a world beater in his last fight versus Robbie Lawler. Lawler had never lost a fight like that in dominant fashion where he was just completely dominated and shut down, neutralized. So that could be an option, the winner of Woodley versus RDA. Either way, I believe there is more of a chance that GSP could come back this time around than there was the first time. Does that mean he should? In my humble opinion, and I've been a mixed martial arts fan since the days of, you know, early days, since the since the pay-per-views were on VHS tapes back in the day. Um, they are at a point, or he, I should say, he is at a point where he has to put his health first. But knowing that the insurmountable odds that were stacked against him versus Michael Bisping, for him to do the impossible, for him to come back from a four-year layoff and beat Michael Bisping. So many people counted him out, even former training partners of his, friends, counted him out and said that he would have a tough time. Um, but those that knew him, those that know how talented of a fighter he is, guys like myself, knew that there is nobody that has ever fought inside the UFC octagon like George St. Pierre. He's the best to ever do it. So knowing that he's got this resume, just this perfect resume, you know, there's some slip-ups there with obviously Matt Hughes and, and Matt Sarah, but he avenged those losses, and ever since he has just went on a tear dispatching opponent after opponent, dominating opponent after opponent. What more is there to prove? You're pushing 40, you're a handsome guy, you've made a lot of money, You've made even more money now than you know what to do with due to this fight versus Bisping. He made around three to four million bucks for this comeback. That's a lot of money in the UFC. What is the true point? I think that the only time he would really be amped up outside of this Bisping fight to come back would be to fight Conor McGregor because that's kind of the, the top spot fight. Who wants the top spot? GSP was the former top name. Connor is the current top name. It would be literally a tale of the tape between two of the biggest names inside the Ultimate Fighting Championship that the sport has ever known, and that is including Ronda Rousey. George St. Pierre was the first guy to generate over a million pay-per-views. Uh, Ronda Rousey then did it, and obviously Connor. So Brock Lesnar was mixed in there between Ronda and uh, or between uh, GSP and Ronda, but outside of that, I mean. That's it. Those are the four biggest draws that the UFC has ever had. One of them was in the WWE. Ronda is a female, and she was dominant, so she had that you know, on her side. You know, As a new, fresh female face of female fighting women's MMA, Conor has a whole country behind him, had an epic rise, but GSP was drawing a million pay-per-views when the sport was nowhere nearly as known as it is today. I'm talking 2008, 2009, 2010, seven, eight years ago. A million pay-per-views. That's a lot. So, um, you know, does he have much to prove? I, if as a hardcore GSP fanboy, as my buddy Mike Costello says, I'm a fanboy. I am a fanboy of GSP. I admire the hell out of a guy that, that was dominant and cleaned up the sport, brought USADA into the equation, put his foot down and said, if this doesn't get fixed, I'm out. And he was out. That was part of his reason why he walked away four years ago as well. So he did all that. What more is there to prove? Maybe the top spot. I'm Ryan Thomas. That was the Thomas Take. Will GSP come back? Take care.